GDC 2013, ich stehe hier am Stand von Crytek und da ist natürlich unter anderem die CryEngine 3 super wichtig und der Herr neben mir kennt sich damit viel besser aus als ich selbst, denn der ähm, macht was genau? So, what, what's your job at Crytek? Uh, I'm an SDK uh, engineer, software engineer, so I program for the SDK licensing. It means uh, pulling in features, uh, creating new features, improving, uh, providing support to licensees, bug fixing, all these kind of things. So and there are some kind of new stuff uh, in, in CryEngine, it's like 3.5. Yeah. So, so what's new to the engine? What's, what's the biggest thing? Uh, so 3.5 is our new, uh, new iteration of the engine. It's based off the back of um, the latest Crisis 3 code as well. So all the new features are in there. We've got a lot of new rendering updates, uh, new AI system, new animation system overhaul. Um, so in general, we step the whole package up a bit and it should be out soon and that will be our, our vision for this year. So what are the technical details? So, so like the rendering stuff and what, what's uh, that? Yeah, so um, the, for the rendering we have uh, real-time reflections for water, for example. Uh, we have volumetric fog. Uh, we have uh, HDR lens flares, uh, area lights, um, something we call picture, pixel accurate displacement mapping, which is an extension of the parallax occlusion mapping, which works similar to tessellation for the DirectX 11, but it works on the pixel shader. So you can use this to balance out um, if you're vertex bound, for example, on your game, you can use this technique to still have your silhouettes and your nice detail, but uh, to place it in the pixel shader, for example. Um, for the rest, there is the AI overhaul. So the, uh, all, we used to have like different sections. So you would have goal pipes, uh, behavior trees, and these kind of things. We all merged it into one, which is now called the modular behavior tree. And um, so this is like in one file or in one tool, you'll be able to set up the whole behavior for uh, one AI character or a group of AI. And the animation system, um, there will be a new tool called Mannequin. And this is also... Uh, Like, um, we used to have Anamgraph, and the mannequin is uh, a new tool built on the back of it. So it'll have a better preview, it'll have a time slider, which uh, is coherent to other tools we are using. Um, yeah, and it uh, has a good preview. So yeah, it's uh, promising, I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> so, and it's uh, obviously all the, the high-end features are for the PC, so what about the, 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 the consoles right now, so Xbox 360 and PS3, are they supporting all this stuff or not? Uh, yeah, so DX11 is obviously PC only, um, but uh, so the pixel, accurate, the, the pixel accurate displacement mapping can be used on consoles, for example, but it's quite heavy, so it shouldn't be overused. But um, the 3.5 engine is also next-gen ready, so we're uh, targeting all the new platforms that are coming out, as well as the high-end PC, so DX11 and um, that we think is the, uh, the upcoming standard, so we're catering for that. But we try to uh, keep all platforms in mind, so the current gen as well as the next gen. So the engine is future-proof for the next-gen uh, console. So um, does that mean that um, PS4 games will, be look, will look like uh, Crisis 3 on a high-end PC now, or what do you think? Um, well, that is, our, um, that is what we try to achieve, at least. So any next-gen platform that will come out, or any platforms that will come out in general, we always try to get the best quality on it. You, we've seen this with Crisis 3 as well, like there was the, uh, the PC one, But obviously the consoles have less resources available, but still we try to squeeze as much as we can out of it. And uh, on any other platforms that are upcoming or, uh, I don't know, mobile market, whatever is coming up, we will do the same. We will look at the platform and we will try and see what's the best we can get from it. And for any title, I think we should try and like, get the most like, equivalent to PC. So are there already some kind of uh, uh, developers that you are supporting uh, using uh, CryEngine 3 for, for next-gen platforms? Uh, the 3.5, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there are a few licenses that have started using it. We're showing this today, actually, and hopefully from the next weeks on, we'll roll it out to more licenses and also to the uh, CryDev, which is like the free SDK platform. So that means uh, everyone should be able to use it. So, and what about the, the comparison to, uh, uh, to Unreal Engine 4, which is on the, on the show too? So, what do you think? What are the main differences or the main things that CryEngine makes better or, or worse? Um, I haven't seen much of Unreal yet, apart from the demos. Um, but it's good to see that they move to a deferred pipeline as well. Um, CryEngine has been doing this for a while already, so I think 
um, we're kind of uh, a proven system. So uh, it's been used on a lot of release titles already. Uh, features have been growing inside the deferred renderer and stuff like that already. Um, the, what you see is what you play has always been a big uh, feature for CryEngine. So it means also with the new AI system or anything you make inside CryEngine, you can jump in game and um, yeah, play what you just built. Uh, iteration times are really quick. We don't have any baking or anything like that. So you can just export your level and in a few seconds you can boot it up in the launcher and play what you just created. Okay, thank you very much. All right, no problem.